popped up, we actually had to correlate that information with other information from the infrastructure from the uh, from the IT infrastructure to be able to figure out was it really uh, uh, intrusion or is it a real alert or what do we really need to do? And that is the time when uh, the intrusion detection systems were supplemented with SIM solutions which were focusing on identifying not just the alert which the IDS was throwing up, but also the logs that were audit trails that were being generated by the end systems. So we went ahead and put in the SIM solution to bolster the capabilities of the IDS. So we started correlating IDS logs with uh, maybe a server log or, or maybe with an antivirus log or a firewall log. And then when we see certain sequences of logs being generated from different systems, we thought, okay, this was a little better uh, situation to be at in terms of intrusion, uh, incident detection than what the IDS system alone was able to do. Uh, what the SIM also was trying to do was providing a capability to look into all the activities that were happening and provide a compliance report. Uh, for example, uh, what were the login failures? They were not necessarily an incident detection, but it was complying to the requirements that not many of these standards laid out. For example, ISO 27001 or PCI uh, or HIPAA and a whole bunch of uh, regulations uh, re required us to go ahead and define the activities and report on them. And that is where the same solution and the idea solution fitted into the overall structure of what we were trying to do from a security perspective. But then uh, the original cause of uh, incident detection was still, is still uh, not really getting addressed because the IDS and the SIM put together still are missing out most of the APTs or most of the custom threats that, uh, that are being uh, that, that we are getting hit on. So the troubleshooting of the root cause of the failures uh, were not really, uh, are not really coming up. I mean the statistics uh, you know, pretty well tell us that uh, it, it's almost a year before uh, we can identify the attack actually happened. Uh, so we definitely are falling short of identifying the incidents or the, uh, or the attacks that are happening against our organizations by just looking into the IDS logs or the audit trail logs. And why is that this case? Uh, that is where we would try to explain why this is the problem uh, using what we know to uh, talk about as an anatomy of an attack. Okay. Uh, the, the slides are refreshing a little slow. Uh, I'll just take a moment uh, before we move on to slide number four where uh, we will discuss uh, the what really APT uh, is doing in terms of the anatomy of that particular APT attack and why it is very, very difficult uh, to really identify an attack well in time. So uh, any attack, it starts off with what we call as a surveillance. Uh, we know that nowadays generic attacks are really not happening or making so much of a difference. Uh, what is happening is this custom attacks that really start off with uh, surveillance and then they move on to um, analyzing the uh, analyzing the particular target and then probing the target and once we have sufficient information on the on what is available for me as a platform to attack, that is when I start off set up the attack. I go ahead and use custom threats or custom zero day attacks to do an intrusion and once I have done, started off the uh, you know attack and I have a successful intrusion, I start covering up my tracks for all the other activities that I have done up till now and then I keep on identifying those valuables that I want to really steal and once I have got all of those uh, valuables that I need to, uh, that I originally intended to get, then I complete the cover-up and I move on. Now during this entire process, 
uh, maybe at the surveillance layer or the analysis layer, even if I get certain indications that something is going on, I might have missed the attack and the attack could have got computed without me having any clue as to that the, we were actually breached. And this is the case in many of these APTs that has been reported in the newspaper. So if during this entire time period, you were not aware that something has happened, most probably you'll know about the attack from the newspapers. That's, that's uh, a lot of times that has happened and that's a very, very scary situation. Uh, because the analysis that is happening, the setup that is happening and the intrusion that is happening is really based upon very custom built attacks, which our existing setup, which is in terms of the, uh, the response setup, really is not in a position to um, monitor. So we do our threat analysis, we do our discovery of what is the risk attack, we do our own uh, intelligence, we do our monitoring, but at some point of time we identify the attack. Once we have identified the attack, we start doing the uh, root cause analysis, we report on that, we try and contain that, uh, contain that particular attack, we try and do damage control and then uh, at some point of time we are, we go out to the external world and say, okay, we have responded to it and we have recovered from it. From a timeline perspective, there is though that difference between when the attack actually began and when the attack was particular identified based upon the various, uh, you know, uh, time slots. And that attacker free time, uh, I'll just wait for the refreshing and I'm sorry about this. Uh, so the, diff, the time between when the attack begins and the time when we have identified the attack based upon all the activities that has happened, that is what we call as attacker free time. This is the time when the attacker is sitting within our systems and doing their uh, discovery and their uh, cover-ups, uh, which we do not get a view of. Our idea is to make sure that this free time that is there or what we call as the dwell time. And the time between when we have identified and when we have responded, both of these times need to become as small as possible. To make sure that the dwell time and the response time is as small as possible, we do need to have a little different approach. The advanced threats are targeted, hence we are not in a position to uh, identify the attack well in time and because it's a new kind of attack they are slow and slow the response time the attack uh, the time between the identifying of the attack and the response time that is also very long because we do not have sufficient information in the audit trails itself uh, because the attack was designed in that manner it was designed to be stealth and hence we need to have more information around uh, how we can have our response time also reduced as much as possible. And the other one which is uh, an important aspect of an APT is that uh, there is always a human involvement within an APT. Uh, there is social engineering which plays a major role uh, for every, uh, every APT that, uh, that becomes successful. So to do, make sure that we have the human involvement factor uh, factored in, uh, and that it is the attacks are low and slow, and it's going to happen over a period of time as long as maybe six months, uh, and that it is custom built. It is not going to be picked up by my IDS patterns, or it's not going to be picked up by my antivirus systems because they are targeted, they are zero day. So keeping in mind that all of these is what makes sure that it is a advanced persistent threat or an, uh, you know, a category of this. We need to have uh, capabilities built in which will have uh, allow us to decrease this dwell time and increase our response time. So what do we need to do? How do we need to evolve our, uh, how do we need to evolve our uh, a, a SOC from the present day scenario where it is primarily dependent upon uh, SIM or primarily dependent upon, dependent upon our IDS. Uh, one, the IT environments have really expanded. We 
we are focusing with our SIM primarily on the firewall and the switch and the uh, networking equipment, uh, whereas the information around these attacks really are happening at the application layer. Uh, so the and of course there are many more uh, IT um, uh, systems that are playing a role within the infrastructure. So things have become more complex, and that is where SIM is struggling really to have. Uh, information from all the different sources of information that give me idea of what is going on. Uh, not just the security tools, not just, and the moment the app 